Hey there Mission Control, The Real Martian here. Well, we're going to continue the Help Needed series, and today we're going to be talking about microgreens. Oops. All right. The purpose of this video is to solicit help from all of you out there and your ideas, uh, so that this is a community effort to put this together, to come up with an innovative way to process microgreens. Now, we're going to have to be processing lots of microgreens. Uh, as an example, kind of some numbers, we're going to need to have... So that's a lot of trays that we're going to have to go through. So we're going to need some innovation in order to solve this problem. So let's go over some of the basic steps. Step one that takes some time is planting. Then you have the growing. And that is going to lead to another project I haven't mentioned yet, which is the lane one and lane two uh, microgreen specific design. So I'll call that microgreen specific design. All right, so I'm really excited to get to the, the lane-specific build, and I'm going to do another video. It wasn't part of my original uh, items up here that I was going to talk to you about and the help wanted, but I, in talking through it and so far how these videos have gone, I'd like to share it with you as well. But I'm going to keep this video specific to the process um, that you have to go through and where we need to innovate there for microgreen processing. So once you grow it, uh, then you need to harvest it. So this is the act of taking the tray off of the line, off the production line, setting it somewhere else, and then whacking it uh, and getting the microgreens off of it. If you watch Curtis Stone's videos on YouTube, he does great work, uh, scissors or a really sharp knife. Uh, but we have so many trays that what I'm thinking is that we have some form of conveyor belt. You set the thing down and either you have a hedge trimmer or something like a hedge trimmer that the microgreen tray you know, comes right through and gets cut and then maybe some air that blows the cut uh, microgreens off to the side, get caught on another conveyor belt or a bucket or a bag or something, whatever it is, uh, that then collects the microgreens and brings them to the next spot of the station. So harvesting, uh, I guess, so you have the actual act of picking up off the lane, um, and then you have the act of cutting. After you cut, you have to clean. So right now we have the three station sink, clean, 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 um, and then you have dry. And while it's drying, you have a sort that you have to do, which is really your, your quality control, where you're looking for little seeds stuck to the microgreens, any fungus, any bad microgreens, and you need to get rid of them, and then packaging. PKD, short for package. Um, and right now what we use, let me show you. Sustainable is our goal. So we use these Rubbermaid bins for our customers. And then we put labels on them. I don't have any labels on this one yet. Um, with the date. And then we take these to the customers and give them to them. And then when we take our next shipment there, we get the used ones back. And then we just keep cycling through these. So we're not, you know, creating more waste. That said, uh, it might be better for us to shift over to like plastic baggies or big plastic bags or something, but plastic bags aren't as stackable, so I think our customers like, might like to do this. But when we get all the trays that we need to be doing, uh, we're going to need to think a lot bigger than those Rubbermaid trays, so the plastic bags might be the way to go. So, uh, planting, growing, harvesting, cutting, cleaning, drying, sorting, and packaging. Um, and I'll, I'll put on there too just for those that want to have some fun with it. Delivery. So when you deliver these things, they got to stay cold the entire time. And I'm thinking eventually we're going to need like a van with a cooler in the back, like an actual uh, air conditioning unit that keeps it pretty cool down to 40 degrees or so, so that the microgreens don't start to wilt and they stay as fresh as possible for the customer. So you have these nine different uh, processing uh, steps that we need to go through. And Planting is pretty much going to be a human thing. You're just going to have to do that. Um, there are some really cool videos out there. The guys have got the 3D, you know, the arm. It's essentially a 3D printer. 
Um, but for us right now, I can't think of a way where you're going to put all the dirt into one of those things because you, you have to take your tray. Oh, sorry. There's one more thing. I hope you can see it. You have to clean everything. So once you get done going through um, emptying out the trays, like you get to the cutting, the tray is actually empty. You actually have to take everything down and clean it. Uh, so that there's no bacteria or fungus spores left on it. And then you can put it back on the line. So once you get to step 10, you can go back to step 1. So, um, and this delivery and storage uh, together. So when we get done packaging, we may not do all of our deliveries that day. It might We might batch them all up and deliver once a week or whatever. Um, but... Uh, we will need storage. So we have a big commercial fridge coming, a three-door three, three door fridge that's going to be put in the building. I look forward to sharing that with you. So we will be able to store almost all the microgreens that we could possibly need in a week. Uh, we'll be able to store those out there. So um, we might end up having to get a second fridge, but uh, should work. Okay, so these are all the different steps. And in this video, I just want to give you kind of my idea, the walkthrough. So let's go out to the building and let me show you what I'm thinking. So I want to talk. Ab I want to talk about microgreen processing and what we have to do here. So in our insulation video, we talked about the fact that chances are this is going to get enclosed and turn into a little room. Well, when we process microgreens, you have there's a few steps that you have to go through. And what I want to talk about here is kind of visualizing the harvest uh, and the cleaning and everything. So I I'd have to take my tray. Right, and right now, I, I walk back over here. I'm sorry, I walk over here, and I set it down, and I start snipping. I, I start cutting it all with scissors or a really sharp knife. We use both depending on what type peas. The sharp knife works. Microgreens that are radish or radish greens, uh, usually a uh, scissors are what are required there. Then you take them over to the wash sink. We have a three-station wash sink wash, 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 and then you lay them out on the table. Over here, you lay them out on the table, you turn the fan on, and you dry them. That's so they don't get moldew or mildew on them or any mold or anything uh, before they get to your customers. Then you have that empty tray. You gotta take the tray outside, you gotta clean it, then you gotta replant it, put it back on the lane. So, when we're up to full speed, doing that one tray at a time, isn't going to work. It's just going to be Alicia and I, uh, and that's Mrs. Martian. And we're going to have lots of trays that we're going to need to do. So what I want to do is think through an innovative way, kind of like Henry Ford and the assembly line, where I can essentially take a tray, put it here, which is the middle of the building, and then have it run through some form of automation. So let me give you the idea. I don't know if this will work. I'm just brainstorming here. And I wanted to kick this out to the world and see if you all could come up with something. So, this area, the building, was left open so we can get a tractor in here and that allowed us to help build all these lanes and everything. Um, I think the only thing that we potentially change this year though it would have no impact on this is we would dig a big six foot deep trench here and put our heat tube down on the ground and then cover it back up so you wouldn't know they're there. So you're still going to have this big open area. Well, for microgreen processing, I think it would be way cool and necessary if I could take my microgreen tray and set it right here. And there's a conveyor belt. And that thing takes it over here and it runs through essentially some form of oscillating like a hedge trimmer. But we have to have a hedge trimmer that's meant for uh, things you can eat, <laughs> uh, not covered in grease and oil, because then that just makes cleaning the things you're going to eat a lot harder. So you need to have a hedge trimmer type of thing, and then it runs over the top of your tray like this, wah, mows it all down. But then there's the potential that those clippings can just fall back into themselves and kind of get clipped twice. So I think if you have a little puff of air just constantly going, so as it comes, it goes, and it's just puffing, and it's moving those microgreens like over here to another little area where they can run up and down a conveyor belt uh, to the next station. Once it's cut, 
we essentially just need to dump it. So you could literally like go like this and have it fall into a, a bin that you then would move out of here manually like with a pallet jack uh, so that you can then go through all that stuff in your compost pile. Those microgreens that were blown off come over here and then like a spray station where you have uh, some medium pressure jets spraying from the ceiling down and then kind of you're going to have to spread them out somehow uh, in there automatically. They keep coming down here um, and they go through a top down drying station and then when they get down here there's essentially a big bag and they drop into the bag being fully dried uh, and that would that would be huge if we could do something like that. I think that's where the real challenge of what we're trying to do as far as you know the microgreens go. This isn't part of the G11 idea where we want to put this in a conix just as a reminder. We're doing this to help generate funds to pay for all the research. So this year is really, we pretty much got it down to where we've got to get this running, do this type of processing, figure out the heating, the thermal, uh, the insulation, so that we can actually really focus on the long-term strategy next year and the year after. But this year we need to get the microgreens up and running so we can earn the money we need to pay for the research and development. Unless, of course, one of you out there knows a really friendly angel that could help us out and get us the funding that we need. That would be way cool. <laughs> anyway, so that's the idea for microgreen processing. The actual automation of that is what I'd really like to do. So finding a conveyor belt, finding that station, uh, getting the air system put in. I think those will all be really good things. And if we can make it work, then we could go through a lot of microgreens, just the two of us. Uh, it would be a lot easier.